Uh, hi everyone, this is Yusai. Welcome to Let's Talk. And today my guest is Devin Windsor. I can't wait for you guys to meet her. She's a supermodel. She has walked just about every runway you can ever imagine. She's a business <laughs> owner. We're gonna learn all about that. And by the way, she knows her way around the kitchen. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Well, first of all, I want to thank you so much for your donation. So guys, for everyone who comes on as a guest at Let's Talk, we have a new initiative that when they come on to show their appreciation, we're donating 500 masks for every guest that comes on and they're going to the first responders. And I'm working closely with MJ Day, the uh, Sports Illustrated uh, Swimsuit. She's actually distributing them for me in the East Coast. And so Devin, for being here today, you have contributed to 500 masks Plus your donation, we're donating 1,000 masks to Woo! first responders. So thank you so very much for that. That's amazing. That's insane. So for, it's, you know, every little that we can do that helps. So for any of you guys out there are interested in supporting, doesn't matter how much, um, go to the website, take a look. Even just to visit the website, it's a support. And we're happy to hear from you guys. And with that, yeah. I want to jump right into what Devin's been working on. So tell me this project I got to see on your Instagram yesterday, Project Sunshine? Yes, Project Sunshine is an organization that I've been working with for a while now. Um, basically, what Project Sunshine is, is that it's an organization that visits and supports kids in hospitals. So I personally will go, or they have volunteers who go and they meet the kids in the hospital, they play games with them, we make crowns, we color, we play basketball, wow. whatever. And so obviously I can't be going to the hospitals now, but you can obviously help. I made a hundred, I think a little over a hundred little like bags, Project Sunshine bags. They had like crowns and coloring books. So I did all that and we shipped that out to a hospital in Louisiana. But wow. yeah, Project Sunshine, it's an amazing organization. So check it out. You guys, you guys check it out oh, on yeah. Instagram. It was so inspiring to watch all those bags being shipped out. I know that feeling. Every time you get yeah. a package that you get to ship out. Because we're all in the same situation here that some of us don't know how to help even when we want to. And right. just by doing doing that, you're making so many kids and, and it's happy and active. You know, that's what yeah. it's all about. Staying active yeah. and being to keep the energy level up. That that really helps through this difficult time. Exactly. Well, well right be, right. I'm so happy you're doing this. I would love to jump into learning about you. And that is, a lot of people always ask, I know this question comes up a lot. How do I become a model? How did you get discovered? So let's just give them that answer. So I would yep. love to know, how did, how did you get discovered? My discovery story is when I was 14, so I was a little baby, but I was 14, I was in Missouri, St. Louis, which is where I'm from. And I was actually at a bat mitzvah of all places. And so at the time, Missouri didn't have like a lot of photographers, no use size there, or at least they were undiscovered. And um, so the, the person who was photographing the bat mitzvah actually approached me because she's also like a high fashion, like local photographer. Wow. That <laughs> so is so she cool. Me and was like, you're really tall and skinny. Like, I would love to shoot you sometime. And I was like, really like wow thanks like I can use my height for something <laughs> so that's basically how it started and then from there I shot with her I met with local agencies signed local and then I kind of like bopped around like in the summers I would go to Chicago LA and then when I was 16 I signed with IMG in New York but I waited to graduate high school to full-time model so amazing yeah i wanted to graduate first but i just like did things on the side throughout the the year i mean at, at 14 you were probably the tallest person in your class yes i was very <laughs> tall i i was probably like already i'm 5'11 now so i was probably like 5'9 at least i think uh it was just so at that time, I know we go through that adolescence that was such an awkwardness, right? So all of us yeah. don't grow into our look until we get later. I, I attribute <laughs> that. I know my future was all out of whack when I was younger and it was, I was very self-conscious. Were you self-conscious at that time about your height and how did you deal oh, with it? Oh, yes. I was very self-conscious. I like hated it. I mean, I think deep down, I'm still a little self-conscious. Like when I'm around people who, who aren't my height, obviously, when I'm around friends that are models, I'm like, Oh, I feel I feel normal, then I go home. 
and everybody's, you know, normal height, I still feel, oh my God, I'm tall. But in school, I was bullied a lot about, about being mm -hmm. so skinny and being so tall and like no boys liked me and I didn't have a lot of friends. So that definitely did not help. So I, yeah, I was very insecure, but I, it just through time and mm. through growing up and living and learning and meeting amazing people and being a model is probably one of the bigger things that really helped me be confident in who I was and not care if people thought I was too tall or too skinny or whatever it was. So, and this is pre Instagram. Like, this is pretty yeah. Instagram. This yeah, is live. So, this is way so. back when. <laughs> <laughs> and what's yeah. interesting is that, you know, people always say the path, what you've gone through is make who you are today. I yeah. always put that on the other side. I think it's a person that you already are able to yeah. make through this time. So congratulations for going through that stage of being bullied. Because I know a lot of models have this common, common yeah. language that is you go through this awkward stage, you're taller, you look different than everybody else. And, yeah. and the kids are mean, guys. Kids can kids be are really hard. mean. I mean, they still are. And it's <laughs> terrible. It's really well, terrible what you have to go through. Now with social media, you, it's worse. This it's might worse. sound funny and sound weird, but um, being Asian, being bullied, there was another layer of racism. So I'm actually really happy to hear beautiful people, blonde hair, white girl can be. <laughs> in a situation where you can feel what I yeah. had to go through. Because I grew up in middle America. I grew up in Indiana. So I was- I don't think the, I knew that. Yeah, I, I was- you the, grew up we, in Indiana. Hey, we're like Midwestern people. I'm tall for Asian because I'm corn fed, you guys. Corn fed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's where I got my height. All yes, it, it's true. <laughs> it's totally true. But no, but, but but all laughing aside, truly, guys out there, when you are, if you're watching and you're still in school, in high school, just think about the girls that you look at or guys you look at think that they're awkward, you're picking on them. One day you might see them on yeah. the runway for Victoria's Secret and you may just yeah. see them on the cover of Vogue. So I know that for me, um, I was definitely, I went through a really, really tough time in high school where predominantly my High school was full of Hispanics. And I was, my brother and I were the only Asian people. There was maybe one or two Asian girls in the school. Wow. But it was, it was very different. And I remember going through this journey and when I graduated, when I started doing television, when I started shooting magazines, people would reach out to me on Facebook. Yeah. Like yeah. they never bullied me. They come me. back. They come back. Like, Wait, did, do you have selective memory? What, you want to? You want to sign cover of Kate Upton on Sports Illustrated because we were friends? <laughs> You're like, I forgot that phase. <laughs> like, I must have not remembered our friendship correctly. No. It's kind of funny. But you know what? We get older and we do forgive people and we do move yeah, on. Yeah, of course. And I do attribute to them of their their whatever behavior that has have also shaped us in our industry because in our industry, yeah. it's not always fun and games either. Competition as a model, they're a different kind of bully. I mean, have you, when you first started, did you feel that tension from other models? Oh, I, I mean, I think for sure being bullied or being in the situation that I was when I was younger definitely prepared me. I mean, you can never really be prepared to be a model, right? Because it's a lot when you're young. But I think just being criticized or picked on for like every little thing that you do or everything about your body, your face, everything. It, I was just kind of like, you know, whatever about it. I was already over it. You know, that already happened to me. I was already picked on. So like, you can tell me I'm fat or tall or too tan or whatever it is. And I'm going to be fine because like I already went through it. So I think that really helped. But I, I mean, you only, went to in time, school. only in time can that happen. It's not like I just woke up one day and was like, I'm over it. You know, it's just through time and through like surrounding myself with like great friends and family that were like, nice. don't listen to the haters or who cares about what that person said about you. You know, you need those people around you because it's hard to do that alone. I mean, I don't think I could do that alone. And it's guys, for you guys are watching out there to get on the cover of Vogue or a Harper's Bazaar, or all these magazine editorial, there is a rigorous process of casting. And we finally find the model we want when they show up like Devin, then she's then again being judged. 
And, and mm -hmm. I said that with the most kindest way possible because the clothes has to fit on her perfectly. And if you don't have the strength like Devin, you can take that really the wrong way. If they're looking at the clothes, it doesn't look good. And they say, oh, it doesn't look good on you. Yeah. Not always saying that you don't look good, but that, that, that sore still hits you just in the jab once <laughs> yeah. in a while. You're like, you know, and we feel the hey. same way as photographers, right? Sometimes they'll yeah. look at the picture and goes, the picture doesn't look good. And we get defensive. We're like, well, it's because the model. <laughs> or it's because yeah. of her makeup. It's not my yeah. picture. I know how to shoot. So yeah. we all get into our own head, don't we? It's just kind of crazy what this industry can do for us, to us, at the same time. And I think yeah. for you, I've been following you. We know each other for about five years. I've seen you yeah. grown so much through social media and that we feel like we're so connected that from... I remember your first show was like product or something like that. Yeah, now, that was my I, first big one. I remembered you because I was like, oh my gosh. She was <laughs> awkward and she was so alien-like. And she, you yeah. were the ultimate opposite of what I grew up with, right? You yeah. Know, the blonde, the Barbie doll, and you were like the perfect proportion. And as a photographer, that was immediately on my bucket list. I yeah. need to shoot her. And that was something that I made sure of it. And we waited till the that. perfect timing to do that, which we'll discuss the shoot just in a little bit. But I, I think yeah. it's so, it's, you know, in the world of Instagram, in the world of how we're exposed now to everything, do you feel that you put the best of everything forward only? Or do you also share the darker side of you on Instagram? I, I try to do both. I think our automatic first reaction is to show everybody the good things happening, mm -hmm. the work you're doing, everything that's positive. Because I myself want to spread positive energy, right? I don't want to like bother people with my feelings. So I'm constantly torn between like sharing and then also kind of keeping it private. Because like we said, people can be mm. mean. So it's like, do I want to come out with my feelings on this subject and then just get annihilated even more by people? So I try to balance of like the days where I just like, I'm not feeling good or I'm feeling really lazy and I didn't get out of bed till one o'clock. And I try to share those times, but I, I, I have yet to like come on and like cry about something to everyone, you know, like I haven't worked up that courage yet. But you know what's interesting? <laughs> but you never it's never one day. <laughs> it's funny that perfect balance, real. right? I try to keep it real. Like I don't want to be fake. I don't want to come off like she's so contrived. Like, I just want to talk to people and like talk to the camera like I'm talking to a friend. That's what I try to do. And that's my point is that you are keeping it as authentic as possible, but you are filtering a little bit because for me, I, I know that, that I can see in your eyes when you do a posting sometimes. They go, oh, she's not having her best day. Oh, she's yeah. having her best day. You know, because we in front of camera all the time. We do these yeah. interviews, we talk, and we, we know each other intimately. And there are days I can feel oh, something's going on. It's interesting how that happens when you get to know a model because the eyes don't yeah. lie. But for you, I think- The eyes don't lie. I they like don't that. lie. But you know what's interesting <laughs> with you is that there are days that when you do post something, for example, it's a simple makeup tutorial in your bathroom with natural light that you just strip all the makeup off. And people don't realize yes, a thousand of tutorials out there. But for you, with your followers, they get to see the raw side of you. It really changes people. And yeah. it's, it changes confidence, right? If you're wanting to do that. But listen, with your makeup off, you're still gorgeous and fantastic. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe a little tear will bring us a little closer to you. <laughs> also, next week, I'm going to be like, I can't do this. <laughs> well, I know when I do Never my hot yoga, I will start crying sometimes. I'll do my exercises. I'll start crying sometimes. Just sometimes we just need that energy. Go, Some days I just, well, yeah, you need to. And I, I so appreciate that you keep filtering and so forth. But one thing that you did not filter that you share with all of us is this very special moment. How oh, yes. <laughs> amazing. I have chills right now just thinking about this moment. We got to oh. live through this moment with you on Harper's Bazaar's uh, website. So if you guys want to see the full article, go to Harper's Bazaar's website and take a look at it. Um, tell me about this moment. Tell me I about who the married. beautiful man next to you. <laughs> yeah, so I got married in November. My husband is Johnny. Well, Jonathan is his real name, Barbara. is his last name. I know he has a girl's name for his last name. It's very confusing. <laughs> But um, yeah, so he actually owns a women's clothing line called Alexis, and oh. we met like seven years ago, and then we 
didn't start dating till like a couple years after that. And yeah, we got married in St. Bart's in November. It was just so much fun. I'm honestly, every single day, I thank God for the fact that I was able to have my wedding because of all the people canceling. Oh I know like gosh. five brides that have canceled mm. their wedding. And it literally breaks my heart because I know all the effort that goes into planning a wedding now. Like I always like, whatever about it. It is hard. It's a lot of work, a lot of stress. So I do feel bad, but I, I'm really grateful that I was able to have that moment because it was so much fun. Like and it, it was, was a big wedding? It was, um, we had about 250 people. So it was I was big, 251, you guys. Me. I was two hundred fifty one. I just got yes. cut off, right? Yes. Two hundred fifty one. <laughs> you should have gone. It would have actually been a blast. I would have loved to photograph you. Yes. My God. Oh please, uh, the Vogue <laughs> photographer photographing my wedding, guys. Can I tell you guys something that's interesting? Wedding photography is actually much harder than anybody thinks because your responsibility really? of catching that moment. Oh, oh my God. God. So my There's sister a lot of is also. Yeah, my sister's also a photographer, um, um, not her full time, but she does a lot of work with me when we have a lot of huge production in the second cameraman. And she showed up to shoot President Clinton with me. She showed up to shoot big events wow. with me. And she's much better actually at taking picture of, um, she likes to call it normal people. <laughs> <laughs> she's always like i'll shoot the normal people you shoot the models so. <laughs> i feel like it's all about just like capturing moments especially like with my husband who's not like a model it, it's just like it's easier to like go with the flow and like mm. while you're smiling or talking to your wife it's like you snap that it's not like pose pose, pose. exactly like, that's hard well, I mean, this moment was so authentically beautiful. I mean, magic hour right. with that train. <laughs> Tell us who designed this dress for you. Yes, yeah, so the dress is custom made by my friend Zuhair Murad, which is wow. like the most epic designer. I've always dreamed of wearing his wedding dresses. I've walked his shows. So I kind of like custom, we custom made it together and it was, it was really beautiful. We, he actually made me two. He made me that one. And then like a party fun, like sparkly. One. Oh, I saw so, that on the website. Yeah. As well. so, so he check made out me both and he did an insane job. I mean, his like atelier and the beading and the couture, it's like, it's so intricate. It's just hands down. Like I knew I wanted him to make my dresses. So. Very thankful. Thank you. Uh, you look absolutely <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thank I mean, you. absolutely stunning in it. So do you have that dress boxed up safe? What do you guys do with wedding dresses afterwards? No, I actually did get it boxed up. So I got it like dry cleaned and then they put it in like this special wedding box. So I'm just, just like sitting there. I don't know what to do with it. Oh, you have to wear it one day. Just walk around Maybe the my house future and... child will wear it one day. I'll be the mom that's like, wear my wedding dress and the child's like no i don't want to wear your old <laughs> ugly wedding dress like, like it's amazing <laughs> well i'm so glad you shared that such an intimate moment with your friends and family and you're able to share that with all of us because we got to live vicariously through the beauty of that moment it's so <laughs> gorgeous and and not to mention that you had it in november so while the quarantine happened you get to quarantine with your husband how oh, lucky yes. are you <laughs> oh lucky honestly it's great because he works a lot and i've never spent so much time with him and I'm sure anybody who's in a relationship or rooming like with someone, it's like full on. It's I feel like you're either loving it or you're ready to just, you know, just be done. <laughs> Separation of quarantine within quarantine. Just like put yes. a wall up. <laughs> yeah. But fortunately, we're loving it because we never get to have that much time together. So it's great. But that's fantastic. Well, yeah, I want to jump right into this beautiful magical moment we got to create together. And I look at him. He is oh. so talented. Look at what he created. Well, I'm not sure you know, but this shoe was so special for me because it was actually my very first Vogue cover. It was your first because it was my first yes. like, single Vogue cover. Yes. And it was, I didn't so know it was your first too. It was so important to me because it was on my bucket list that you were on my bucket list since that product runway that I wanted you to be on the cover with me. And oh. we, guys, we were at the most epic location in Palm Spring. We traveled to Palm Spring the night before. And I believe there was a Chanel show or a Louis Vuitton show during that time. And it's Louis Vuitton. Yeah. It was Vuitton Louis show. Vuitton. It was full right? Louis Vuitton. You Louis right here. We did yes. the whole story with Louis Vuitton, and it was 
this beautiful location I provided, there's no way I could ever as a photographer have production money to get this epic location, but <laughs> we got this location. <laughs> and it was absolutely a dream to, to check off that bucket list. And it was so special, the shoot was that when my first time for Vogue Thailand, the editor-in-chief Ford actually traveled in. And I wanna give a little shout out to the makeup artist, Fiona Style did the makeup and Rob Telsey did the hair. And it was, it was a magical day it for me. Insane. The light was incredible. We yeah. shot both interior and exterior. And I will have to say, you did not disappoint and in every way. I love this picture so much. I love the I think I need to start. I think I need some bangs. They were actually <laughs> fake bangs, guys. They were. They were. But and I want to, it's funny you said that, I want to point this up. This is how oh. good Rob Telty is as a hairstylist. And I really wanted you to have this little bit of bang because I want to bring back the little bit of 70s look and that tousle lift in hair. Because Vuitton's clothes were very, very high end. And I wanted to just, you know, position the two. And I wanted you to be not a rich bitch as we call it in fashion, right? <laughs> a rich bitch. I kind of wanted you to be like, I'm wearing these fabulous expensive clothes, but I'm just chilling and I'm just, con I love contrast. And you yeah. bought such amazing elegance to even just simply sitting there. You're like, I where's love the remote these control? Photos. <laughs> I'm reliving them. I love, they're honestly, it's one of my favorite shoots. Like if I had to pick like favorite cover, it's like that one's always up there. It's so well, good. You find a wall space in that beautiful home of yours and let me know what size you need. I'll get a print go right there. there for you. Right. Yes. I definitely would right send you a print. No, and, 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 and to watch you grow as a model and what you have experienced is incredible because in our industry, there are commercial models and there are editorial models and then there are models who just just do sportswear and fitness. You cross all genre. And I thought that's so special to talk about that a little bit because you can do fitness and you can do couture and you can do runway. At the same time, you can pull yourself together and hit that runway like nobody's business. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love these pictures. So I want to revisit this moment for you because the time has changed. Victoria's Secret definitely has evolved a bit since the last couple of years of, of, we won't talk about their problems, but we'll talk about the glory time of the brand. Um, growing up, Victoria's Secret was something I watched and looked between Victoria's Secret, Guess, and Sports Illustrated. Those were, those were the three brands as a photographer I define myself close, so, so closely to, because yeah. to me, they were really women empowering. And I know, I know in the industry, it was, you know, women wearing bikini and so forth. But truly, I don't think we hear enough from the models talking about when they wear those bikinis, a lot of it is for their own self empowerment, isn't it? When you walk down that runway, you really have to be in the right mindset to be there. And it's more about yourself than anybody else, right? Yeah, I mean, that show and those moments were like, aside from getting married, the best time like of my life, literally, like, it's so hard to describe because I remember hearing like, it's just so fun. And like all the other angels, like before the show was like, just have fun with it. And it's like, what do you mean? Like, I'm so <laughs> nervous right now. But then like, once you get out there, you're like, this is the time of my life. Like, this is my time to shine and like show the world like that I can strut it. And it's just, and it's also just a, all things aside, like it was just like, uh, like the height of like a model's career. That was like what models wanted to do. So it was like, and that was my first time walking. It was right when social media started to really hit. Yes, and I remember. I remember just like the followers coming in from that show and the, the fans were so dedicated, like the Victoria's Secret fans, like even before the show was announced, they already had a list of like girls who've gone to the casting girls can like, they're just crazy fans. So like the whole package of it was just like boosted my confidence and my career in so many ways. It was just like iconic. It really I'm was. I'm sure you grew up watching people like Tyra Banks who walked out around with yes. Heidi Klum. I mean, and all the way to Angela Lingvall epic. who was more like on the fashion. It, it was one true runway at its prime covered yeah. with commercial girls. And, and they didn't get enough credit for curvy girls. I know there's a controversy that before they don't have enough curvy girls. Tara was right. considered curvy to me. She was on that runway. Yes, they 
probably perhaps should have somebody like Ashley Graham also struck out down that, that runway, but they missed the opportunity and I'm sure they're scratching themselves going, why didn't we do that? So too bad guys. <laughs> but, but as a whole, that brand did make a lot of influence on me because I love the images that they produce and I love, I did love the shows. I, I'm going to miss the shows. I'm sure you are too. I am. I hope they come back somehow because it was epic. It was, the, I'm saying the best time of my life, literally. It was truly a celebration. I think, I think yeah. a lot of people don't realize that. Yes, the dynamic have changed with Me Too movement and so forth. But there is something to talk about the celebration of the girls. They were all got together and they worked really, really hard to get there. That's one thing that I don't think people realize. It's not a normal casting call. You no. girls work. You are, yeah. you are toning yeah. you are dieting and not in an unhealthy way right because we still want to yeah. see curve we still want to see you know the beautiful shape of your body yeah. but you work with this and you go through casting i mean tell us the first casting process the, the casting process is definitely not a normal casting it you it was it's kind of like three casting so the first one is like you just meet john pfeiffer who is the casting director and it's mm -hmm. kind of like just him and like one representative from BS and it's like very quiet and you kind of just walk in and that's for people that girls that they that's never done the show that they don't really know. So it's like the first thing and then one personality get, test. Yeah, sure. And it's then speed dating. Get, yeah, literally. So once you get past that, then it's the callbacks, mm. which is like two or three days, I think maybe three days. And it's like this, it, that's like the bigger casting where the, there's, I mean, hundreds, there mu they must see hundreds of girls. There's oh. camera crews everywhere. Like you go into this little room, they like have you change into like a, a swimsuit or a bra and underwear. They give you shoes and you just have to like walk out into a table with, with all of these people, like 15 people with cameras and lights and everybody's just sitting there looking at you and you're just like, hello, like, <laughs> Please choose me no but you just gotta walk in and then they you know ask you some questions and then like okay walk and you have to just turn around and strut your stuff and pray you don't fall and then sometimes they'll even have you come back again and then it's fittings and then it's like it's not an easy process and the competition was was there was a lot of competition because every every single person in there was like the most beautiful fit strong confident girls and i was just like what the heck <laughs> how many times did oh, you audition goodness. to land the runway um i i was i think the luckiest person ever i literally the first time i cast it i got it the first wow. time so wow. yeah it was after my first season after prada the whole thing my hair was white i was like this pale just like skinny fashion angelic girl angel and you were angelic <laughs> angel right off the bat for them I no i was so young and how many um, years they before saw you got something. wings did you get wings the first year then no the first year i had this like super epic um guitar i had like i literally held the guitar and i was like a rock star it was like David Bowie lot, like vibes was what Sophia Neofatale, the stylist of the show, was kept telling me because I had like white hair and it was like leopard and guitar. And then the second year I got wings. It was that purple, purpley screen yes. that you flash with the gold outfit and the white wings. That was my second year. And I got it. I got it for six years in a row. I mean, it was, I was I'm just so lucky. It was insane. Well, it definitely put in a lot of uh, good memories and all of us who, who follow you and your fans loved it. I, I, I loved it. I, because I know you <laughs> as this bubbly and friendly and just a welcoming human being. But when you hit that runway, when you first come out, it's this powerful energy that you cannot deny. And I, I, I absolutely love it how you transform from a product editorial girl like <laughs> to this <laughs> blossom. Literally. You know? With wings and then it just flies and <laughs> like and two with, different vibes <laughs> but i feel like i feel like even though the show is gone for vs you guys carry on that energy and spirit and celebration through your own social media and through the work that you guys are doing and i'm sure through that process inspire you to design for your own collection i want to talk about that so i know you have a collection that's out there yes. devin windsor very original name no <laughs> it's my name <laughs> Well, and, tell yeah, us a little bit about on. how this got started, what, who inspired you to do this. And, and for those out there, I know, just so everybody know out there, I work with so many models and 
every model wish they can model online. So many different collaboration they do from Gigi Hadid doing Tommy Hilfiger collaborations to, to, to Lily Aldridge having her own fragrance. This is what branding is. This is what models do for branding because they then become spokespersons. They're no longer models. Because I don't treat you as a model any longer. You're, you're a brand. And that's the transition that we all hope to become. Same with photographers, right? I, yeah. over the years, had brand myself as a reality TV person at one time, and then, and then TV shows and judges, and now trying to do this talk show thing to raise money for the mass. And, and we all in a process of building a brand. So in your process of building your brand, just give us a little bit of what it takes. How much work does it take to yeah. do that? So as you said, I think the goal for many people or and specifically models in general, building a brand is like the most important thing. Like I didn't want to be pigeonholed into just being a model and that's it, right? Because who knows how long that will last. Like I want to make something that has longevity. And as you know, and as you said, like a lot of models want to just literally start a brand, start their own line, like anything, perfume, makeup, clothes. So for me, swimwear was just something that I felt very passionate about that I loved. Mm -hmm. I love going to the beach. I love the ocean. I felt like the market was, there was two sides to swim, like super high end expensive swimwear. And then like kind of on the lower end. And there was like, there were, I liked a swimsuit that was like special. It wasn't just like a triangle bikini. I wanted something that was like, had some design detail. So that's, that was originally what me, got me started on the idea to, build this the swim line was like okay there's a gap in the market for this and this is what I want to do so that's how it started and then I'm so fortunate because my husband who has the clothing line Alexis um I mean that's like the ultimate guidance ever is somebody who already started their own line what a they started perfect partner. 10 years ago <laughs> yeah 10 years ago I think they started it and now they're in like every major retailer in the world so he has been like my guiding partner throughout mm. the whole thing. He's like, I've obviously designed everything, but he comes in and critiques the designs or gives me suggestions and just like guides me on next steps. Like first you need to like design, then you need to find like a factory to make your designs and you need to sample and then you need to fit them to make sure they're perfect. And you have to pick the fabrics and all this. And there's so many elements to it that without him, I, I mean, I would have been so lost. Right. I'm sure so, the learning yeah. curve was insane because you wear so many different swimwear out there, including yeah. and, and lingerie is a very similar in cuts. But but I, as you know, she was so much of swimwear as well and swimsuits yeah. for, for Sports Illustrated to the days I used to work with guests, to all the lingerie shoot for 10 years I photographed. And, and, and I got really involved with a partner too and built a lingerie brand a few years back called Love House. It was featured in Sports Illustrated for like, 30 crazy. pages, it was crazy. But what I'll do, what wow. I'll say is this, I never realized until I got into the business how difficult it was to actually design swimwear. When I saw you doing swimwear, I was like, oh, she is taking on a challenge because ready to wear is actually much more forgiving. Yeah. Material sourcing that will work in water, salt water, because you are not just wearing something pretty going to a cocktail party, right? Yeah. This has to last. This has yeah. to be washable. This has to yeah. fit. And the fit is so hard it's, on fits everything. Lingerie. So oh. I give you kudos to have a collection. Yeah. Just the mere fact that like you have a collection. A, fi you can't relate, but finding a bra that fits is really hard. <laughs> so, you know what? I cannot relate really physically how it fits, but I can see and watch when I'm on set when a stylist like right. MJ Gray putting different bras on uh, different tops on the swimwear models, they're fitting. And I watch and I see it's not just this swimsuit looks really cute on the rack. It's gonna look great on you. And yeah. you know, that's not true once you start the design process. Yeah, no, you, it's, it's a challenge. The fit's the hardest part. That's why I fit on myself. And then I fit on like my sister or friends, people who have different body types. Cause not everyone's 5'11 and the 32 B mm. like it, it's so difficult. And, and I strive to fit as many people as I can, but I mean, it's impossible to make one swimsuit that fits every single type of body. So that's why my first collection was, it was, I made so many different styles because I was just trying to 
be like, okay, I want to make something for everybody and every girl, the sexy girl, the more conservative girl, like the girl with big boobs, the girl with the big butt, the girl with this, the girl with like, I wanted to just capture everyone, you know? So my next collection is going to be a little smaller, but it's still bigger. I'm just trying to, it, like you said, fits everything. And it's like a bra, like you want it to fit and make you look great. It can't be like, hanging out or loose somewhere like that's not a vibe <laughs> well with every collection that always can grow into a signature piece do you feel like in your first collection you found that signature Devin Windsor design yet um so there's a couple of the styles that we're carrying over from like last season into this mm. new season that did really really well um because consumer so really does give you feedback what works yeah right? that's the most so important I mean, people even email in or comment, but also just seeing what's sold better than others. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like I want to continue to keep designing more because, I mean, that's the fun thing about fashion is that you can just kind of Every constantly, evolving. yeah, you constantly can create new things. So things that I thought were like the coolest thing ever last, last season in my collection, I'm like, oh, I can't see it anymore. And like, I'm already <laughs> onto the new thing. You know, but it's, but it's funny, like we all, Halston always at the signature cut and we have Donna Carroll with the little black dress that she made it so popular. I think within this process of you creating and you will find that signature piece and that yeah. will be your signature piece that would carry throughout every season because that will happen. And, and mostly it happens with a perfect fit. And you're right. It's about that perfect fit. And that's, that's the next thing I want to talk about is that having a perfect fit is not just about aesthetic. It's truly about internal, isn't it? It's about the confidence that you can bring to your customer. Yeah. I want to try to make that. That was really one of my bigger goals is to try to make anyone who's putting it on feel confident and feel like badass, like they can go and they can go out to the beach and own it and like feel special. Like you want to put something on and kind of get into your like alter ego of like this badass confident woman you know we don't always wake up thinking oh I feel amazing today like I'm ready to rule the world but sometimes like that outfit or that little bit of makeup or that swimsuit that you put on you're gonna be like all right like I'm I look great like I'm gonna go live my best life you know for so me, that was eyebrows. what I wanted to do yeah <laughs> for me yeah. if I can put my eyebrow on properly I'm still learning today's not bad <laughs> I think I missed a spot here but when oh I have God. When I have perfect brow, like, I brush it and I go, oh my God, my brow's good today. Then all of a sudden, it's so, something so little. And I think it's so important yeah. for viewers out there that you have to find out whatever that little thing may be that mm -hmm. gives you that extra kick to get started, especially in a time like this. So yeah. I will make sure that we have the website of your collection uh, on the YouTube and as well oh, as Instagram geez. Live so people can go check it out. And I'm excited to see your next collection because it's yes. people don't realize it is it is the most difficult hardest thing to do is that like giving birth and then you <laughs> give a, it really is and, and and did you find it surprising too that when you love something so much and you put it out there it happened not to be the consumer's favorite sometimes it's something that you just like oh Whoa, yeah this is the one that everybody loves do i need to yeah. reevaluate? do you get that oh yeah like i had my baby like my favorite style and my whatever's that I just threw in there. And it's like, my favorite one was like, did okay. And then the whatever ones just like killed it. And I'm like, oh, okay. But that's like, it's all about learning your customer. Yes. Like learning who that woman is and, and seeing like what she's gravitating towards. And sometimes you think, you know, or sometimes you just think that you personally love it. So everyone will love it, but that's not always the case. You have to mm -hmm. like get in the minds of all of the people around the world who could be wearing it so it's a challenge but it's it's fun like I when I see people posting it or or, or like I, I will be at the beach and I see someone wearing it I'm literally so happy I'm like oh my god like that's mine I created that it's just so rewarding it's you need epic. to make sure you send some sample collection to my studio so that we can yes. have our hand that we get an opportunity oh my god. to put on models 100%. I would absolutely love to support you so 100%. not only do you do runway walks, not only do you do editorial to high fashion to Victoria's Secret, you also know your way around the kitchen like nobody else. And <laughs> I've been watching and following you. You have lots of YouTube fans. You have lots of lots of Instagram IGTV fans as well. Tell me what sparked this inspiration to start cooking. 
I, I've always loved cooking. I grew up with both of my parents cooking homemade meals almost every night. They're not chefs, wow. but they just like literally would cook homemade meals. Mm. So I grew up just like thinking it was normal that everybody cooked homemade meals, you know? So I just like one day started getting in the kitchen, like helping them out. And so that's kind of carried, it kind of took a break in the beginning of my career when I was traveling so much. And like, you live in these little small apartments that just are not inspiring to cook in at all because the kitchen's (laughs) like this big. But especially in this quarantine, I mean, I I had a vlog, I've had a vlog for about a year or Mm -hmm. so, and I would cook occasionally on there, but the views were never that great. Cause I was like, well, like people really care about like routines and, and, you know, makeup and workouts, like they weren't gravitating. My fans weren't mm-hmm. gravitating towards the cooking. But during this quarantine, everybody's home. Everybody's needing to try to cook. And the response and the comments and the DMs that I would get of like, I'd be like, what do you want to see? Recipes, 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 recipes. Yes. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I have to, I have to feed these people. Like, I have to feed. Isn't that interesting? Network. Isn't it interesting that like design, the consumer tells you, they kind of bring to you what they love. Mm-hmm. Same thing with your Instagram, with what you put out there, or what, what this media that we have, we really get market research immediately. And I'm oh, so yeah. glad the fans are reacting to it, that you're doing vlogs again, you're cooking. And I, I want to be invited to that house and cook in that kitchen one day we with you. We should do that. So, you know, we should 100% love. do that. That would be so, so what's your signature well, dish? Do you have wow. one? Wow. Well, you know I have a cooking show in Asia called Street to Kitchen Asia. Yes. And I but traveled through Taiwan. Cook. Oh, well, I, I love making signature dishes from Taiwan because I grew up with the street yeah. food kind of meal. And yep. there's a dish called three cup chicken. It is so easy to make. Get my recipe. I'll send it to you. It's on SusieKitchenAsia.com, and I would love for you to make it. I'm but telling you. But you have to come here and show me at some point because I'm sure I I'll make you talk. <laughs> so you know, I started cooking because my father was a a cook in a restaurant when we first moved here. He was actually a photographer in Asia, but because of language barrier, he came here. We live in Terry Ho, Indiana, where my uncle had a restaurant. He was washing dishes and he would drag my ass with him to, because during the summer with no school and I didn't speak a word of English, we would go into the restaurant kitchen every single day. So I learned how to butcher a chicken in, front, in wow. three and a half minutes flat. I learned how to you know, chop ribs. I know how to fold dumplings and break down broccoli. Yeah. And funny enough, white people, you guys, love broccoli and beef. It is not a food that we eat in Asia. It's made for you guys. <laughs> but... It's a <gasps> lot of work. We have to break down the broccoli. We don't just chop it. We have to peel the skin off the outside. That's why you guys love it so much because the tenderness is on the inside of the broccoli. So that's oh, how I got into the kitchen. And 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 one trip I was on with um, with Chrissy Teigen and Irina one day on this job that we're doing for this brand called Beach Bunny. I'm sure you know the swimwear. Yeah. Lot. They decided to go in the kitchen one day to cook for me. And I saw them bring out this dish, it was hilarious. You can actually Google this, you guys. Mm-hmm. And I had this sparkling idea. I said, we need to do a TV show called Model That Actually Eats. I mean, seriously. Yes. And, yes. And, and Chrissy Teigen and I had talked so much about that. And uh, funny enough that she is now, I mean, cookbook after cookbook and everything yes. she makes is so inspiring. And, and, I, I, and I love watching that. And I love that that's part of your DNA now. Fitness, yeah. healthy, and you guys, do go to Devin's Instagram and vlog and look at her recipes, <laughs> make them, take pictures and send it back. It's what you guys do out there reflects and give us validation that we're doing something good for the space that we're yes. in. And, and it's, it's, people forget is we're influencer, you want to call us, you want to call a uh, TV personality. God knows we've both been on TV shows that, that it's a lot of giving out. And the feedback and positive feedbacks really does keep us activated and keep us alive yeah. and keep us wanting to be here to talk to you guys. So, so please do give us more positive feedback. Keep the negativity yes. to yourself. We know what's wrong with us already. We don't yeah. need to remind us. <laughs> we don't need to hear it, okay? We don't need you. We already have Just our own Good security. vibes only. <laughs> good vibes only. I know. Yes. Instagram should have an automatic feature, like a filter. Oh, bad vibe. Review it. Exactly. It Exactly. That could be something we good. Should. No, but they but should. I I I love what you have done for the last 
five years I've known you, and I can't wait to see all the other things that you begin to do again. So I have a few questions here that came in from the last couple of days DM. So I'm gonna fire them off for you, okay? Oh, okay. So here we go. Oh my God, you're so cute. This Look is your you. question. <laughs> you're like so tech savvy too. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, there's nobody here but me. I'm operating sound. I'm I know. I, I'm, that's what I'm so impressed about right now. <laughs> oh, wow. So you have done so much in your career, everything from runway to commercial work, even reality TV. And God knows we've both been on it. And I just for the record, on the show, Model Squad, we were both very misunderstood. That's on the record. <laughs> yeah. And you guys can make sure you watch it. Sure. Just know a lot of editing and yes, Devin our friends, and yes, Olivia and our friends, and it was a TV oh my God. show. <laughs> I almost forgot. Yeah, no. It's we kind of want to forget, but it's out there, but I just yeah. want to put that note that I know Devin really well. We were very misunderstood, and it was an editorial yeah. decision. But but It's reality so, TV. It's reality, it but, is. Which is really good, this question is asked, is that in the process of all these things you have done, any regrets? Any regrets? Um, hmm, that's such a hard question because you want to regret things that you've done, but then at the same time, it's kind of directed you and turned you mm -hmm. into who you are today. So I, I want to say no, like no regrets. Wow. I, 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 I agree with you. I, when people ask me that question, when this comes, this is kind of question that comes to an interview with me and I always said, I, I have regrets for other people. <laughs> I have regrets for myself. There are a lot for I'm you. Like, no. I regretted that they bullied me. Oh, I regretted yeah. that they said no to me. But I don't yeah. regret being on the end, being told no, because yeah. I know that's what drives me to get a yes. And and this is very evident every day right now for me in a quarantine creating this show. There's a lot of no's. People say, oh, I don't want to come on a show. It's not right for me. And I have to take that no into a super positive and get somebody like Devin to be with me, get people yeah. that are supportive. And that's what I mean by being in, being present and, and take all those regrets or other people's regrets and turn it into yeah. something positive for both of us. Yeah. That's amazing. And not, look, not looking back because mm -mm. there's no point. You can't relive it. You can't redo it. So why, why look back? Move no, forward. we're looking forward. Well, Blinders. that's great because that's a perfect question next for you when you're saying that. So in your bucket list, we all have them. What's on your bucket list that you have yet to achieve? Oh my gosh. I feel like a lot. One, I just want to build my swim line into something that's not even just swim. Like I would love to build it out to be like an active athlete. brand and en endless, endless opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'd love to just build it um, for my swim, for modeling. I think it's always been a dream of mine to be like, in American Vogue, on the cover of American Mo Vogue, let's dream big, right? So that's great. Let's do that. You know I would what? love a makeup contract. There's a lot. There's a lot of goals I have. But you know, I was listening to Ashley Graham the other day, which I sent an invite for her to come on this show, and she said yes. So I'm super excited to have her because she has some. She's somebody that I look up to so yes. much. We came out, came up in the industry around the same time. Um, I share a TV stage with her, with American Beauty star with her, and and she's the one actually instrumental to make sure there was a diversity on stage with her. So it's not all white girls, and that's why I always appreciate her point of view. And one thing she said the other day on her um, talk with Naomi Campbell, uh, Naomi Campbell, uh, I think it's called No Filter on YouTube, so you guys want to check it out. Um, yes. And she actually said this, that you have to ask for it. Not just think about it and that you want it, you have to ask for it. So when you get a chance to be at Medball again and you get to walk up to Anna Wintour, ask <laughs> for a cover. No, I, 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 when she said that, I got chills. I go, you're right. We, just ask we for it. We can't just dream. We have to ask for it. And I got to tell you, this cover came because I was shooting for Harper's with our Singapore for years and years. I've been in amazing collaboration with Kenneth Go, the editor in chief of, of Harper's Bus Singapore. And I do a lot of Asia publication because I'm, I'm Asian and I really supported the Asian market. And he was really good friends with the editor of, at, at, at Thailand Vogue, their best friends. And I actually asked him, I said, I know it's not the same title as Vogue versus Harper's, but when you're when you're okay with it, can I please ask for it? Can I please ask for 
to have your blessing and ask for for a cover. And this cover came because I asked for it. And you became a top model for this cover because it was on my bucket list and I asked for it. So you guys out there, Devin, don't ask be afraid. For it. Get it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> and she said, Ashley said, only thing you're gonna get is a no, but who cares? Yeah. Ask again. They can just keep <laughs> saying no. Yeah. You can keep <laughs> Just keep so, asking. I, I love that. I really that really inspired me because uh, listen, I you know my personality. I don't take no for an answer. You know, I just don't. I text you and tell you like stop texting me. Or <laughs> I have a guest I really, really want on this show and I can't say her name. But she said she has said no about five times now. Now her team is saying no. And I said, No, you can say no. <laughs> I can say no. I'm not taking no for an answer. And you actually been preaching that to the world. So I've been watching you. And you're amazing and I love you. So I'm gonna wait till you say yes. And you know what? It might not be tomorrow, it might not be next month, but she will say yes one day and I will be so happy yeah. to tell the story again that because I asked for it. So thank you, Ashley Graham and Naomi Campbell for throwing that energy Very out there for inspiring. both Devin and I. It's great, right? Yes. Isn't that awesome? Well, very last that. question. I love that you always lead the perfect opportunity to ask the question. You said very inspiring. Well, this is the question. <laughs> Who is your biggest inspiration? in the business world. I don't want to say model world because you are already the inspiration for so many of us. So in the business world, in the other sectors, who's your biggest inspiration? Oh, gosh, it's so hard to say one person. On name them. Yes, okay. So I feel like in the modeling world, two of my biggest inspirations were, um, well are, one, Giselle, which I guess seems like the obvious answer to everyone. But if if you think about it, she has been able to, I feel like, I fully believe that life is all about balance. And so mm. I feel like it's very important to balance like your family and home life with mm. your work life. So I feel like she's been able to do that. And she has like she's an amazing one. family. And she's like so kind, but she's also like this badass businesswoman who has like multiple brands. And I just feel like, that's really inspiring. So her for sure. But there's also like so many other top models out there who, who I just have so much respect for people who have been able to like, from go from modeling into being a businesswoman. Cause I just yeah. feel like it's Brand. not an easy Brand. jump. Yeah. yeah. It's not an easy jump, but like, we obviously have a great platform here to start that, to, to do the jump. But I do have major respect for for people who are doing that. So I guess, I mean, I'll just say Giselle because she's epic. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of um, advice. Next time you're wondering who inspires you, look in the mirror because you should inspire yourself. It's just look at all the things you have done. You have inspired so many of us. You inspired me to, to make sure you're on my bucket list and you have inspired so many out there. And I just want to thank you so much for, for taking the time thank to be with me you. today. And I love our conversation today. And I can't wait that we can be in the same space and cook together and laugh oh, together again. Please. That would be we have to do it, guys. Yes. yes. Well, thank you so Thanks much, for everyone. For, thank you, everyone, for being here. And thank you, Devin, for being here. And thank you again for the generous donation. So today, we'll be sending a thousand masks to first responders because yes. of your help. And so, any I'll of you guys have a link wish after this, too, guys, mm. on my stories. So, if you want to just swipe up from there. I love that. Well, thank you and stay healthy and stay safe out there, everyone. Thanks. And I I cannot stop smiling because of you. Thank you for today. Thank you. It was bye so bye. fun. Bye.